Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with grain-free butter bread. That's right, after roughly 1,000 requests, I'm finally attempting a grain-free bread. And the reason it's taken me so long is because I was fairly convinced there was no way to actually make a decent bread without grain. But much to my surprise, shock, and amazement, this was not terrible. In fact, and I can't believe I'm even saying this, it was delicious. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And first up, we have to separate some eggs. And as I may have demonstrated before, my preferred method for separating eggs is to crack it into an open hand and let the egg white run between your fingers into the bowl. And I find that not only an effective method, but also super fun. And if someone's watching, it looks really cool. And as usual, it's always okay to get a little bit of the egg white in the yolk, but it's never okay to get a little yolk in the egg white. Otherwise, they're not going to whip up as well. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and separate six eggs. And then besides our eggs, the only other thing we want to do ahead of time would be to butter and parchment a bread pan. And after rubbing the inside with a little bit of softened butter, the only place we have to put our parchment is on the bottom. So we'll just cut one piece the same size as the bottom and sort of press it in. And that's it, we'll simply set that aside and move on to the actual recipe, which we will start by adding some grain-free almond flour to the bowl of our food processor. And the finer the grind, the better. Oh, and by the way, I heard you can do this with other grain-free flours, like macadamia or coconut. So as usual, I encourage you to experiment. I mean, you are after all the swaggy pea of bacon grain-free. And then besides our grain-free almond flour, we're also gonna need a touch of salt, as well as some baking powder, and believe it or not, that is going to be it for the dry ingredients. So to finish this up, we'll go ahead and transfer in our egg yolks. And if you're thinking to yourself, shouldn't you have just separated the egg yolks right into the food processor so as not to dirty an extra bowl for nothing? Well, yes. Yes, I should have. But anyway, we will add our yolks. And then last but not least, we'll go ahead and add in a generous amount of melted butter. And that is going to be it for what we're calling the base. And we'll take that base and process it until it comes together forming sort of a sticky dough ball. And I'm not going to show it here, but you probably want to stop once or twice and scrape down the sides so that we're confident everything is mixing up thoroughly. So that's what I did. I pulsed it on and off and scraped it down once or twice until it all came together and sort of ended up looking like this. And then once that's been accomplished, what we'll do is just leave that as is while we move on to whip our egg whites. And to make that job a little easier, I'm going to add a pinch of cream of tartar which I believe they get from skimming off the top of regular tartar, but I'm not sure. But what that does is help your egg whites whip up a little faster and a little easier and to a little larger volume. And if you don't have any, don't worry about it. Just leave it out. And what we want to do is keep whipping these egg whites until we reach soft peak stage, or as I sometimes refer to it, shaving cream stage. And what that is exactly, well, you know what? Let me just show you. All right, we want to whip our whites until this happens. All right, we get some nice, very soft peaks, but they do hold their shape. All right, you see that? So that right there is just about perfect. Actually, check that. That is perfect. And then once our whites are whipped, we'll head back to the food processor and add in about a third of the whites. All right, maybe even up to 40%. And then what we'll do once that's been transferred in is pulse this on and off, which is really going to lighten this mixture up. But probably not all in one shot. You're probably going to have to stop like I did here and take your spatula and scrape everything down and then give it another mix so we know it's all mixing evenly. And yes, of course we're knocking all the volume out of the whites we added, but that's okay. We really need to loosen this up before we add the rest of the whites. Plus, there's probably still hundreds of thousands of microscopic bubbles in there. And then what we'll do once that first third of the whites has been successfully blended in is take this now much looser base mixture and dump it right into the rest of the whites. Oh yeah, just take your spatula and scrape it right in. And what we'll do once that's been transferred in is fold slash stir this all together until everything's well mixed. And while having this well mixed is the ultimate objective, we want to try to do it without knocking all the bubbles out of the whites. So we are trying to be as gentle as possible. But on the other hand, you do have to stir this pretty well. Otherwise, you might get lumps of that thick base in this mixture, which we don't want. And I tried doing this step with a whisk and a spatula. And they both work about the same, but I thought the spatula knocked out a little less air than the whisk. And what we'll do once that's been successfully combined is we'll go ahead and transfer that into our buttered loaf pan. And that's it. Other than cleaning up that little drip, this is ready to transfer into the center of a 375 degree oven for about 30 minutes or so 
or until it looks a little something like this. So this looks done and absolutely gorgeous and possibly sort of bread-like, but we should probably test with a toothpick. And if you stick that into the center and it comes out clean, you're done. But if it comes out with wet batter on it, you're not done. Put it back in for a few more minutes. But as you saw, mine was perfect. And assuming yours is too, what we'll need to do is wait 10 minutes before we unmold this. And just to play it safe, I do like to go around the edge with a thin knife, just to make sure it's not sticking anywhere. And then what we'll do after waiting, like I said, about 10 minutes, is go ahead and unmold this, and we will leave it on this rack until it's cool completely before we slice it. All right, fine, you can do it if it's still a little warm, but like all breads, grain-free or otherwise, I highly suggest you don't cut into this hot, since you're gonna lose moisture. So I patiently waited until mine had cooled to room temp, at which point we can grab a knife and slice in. And while this is supposed to kinda sorta look like white bread, if we're being honest, it actually looks a lot more like a pound cake. So it doesn't really look exactly like bread, but all in all, I was fine with the appearance. It looks perfectly edible. And then as far as the taste goes, I was shocked. Because as this is baking, it smells like scrambled eggs. And so I was pretty sure this was gonna taste like airy, almond-flavored scrambled eggs. But it didn't at all. It actually has a surprisingly neutral flavor. Okay, there is a little hint of toasted almond, just a little, and a very, very faint egginess. But generally, I would describe this as having a very neutral, almost like a bland white bread flavor. So I have to admit, I really was surprised. And by the way, things only got better with the addition of butter. So good plain, very good with butter, which brought me to the ultimate bread test. Will it toast? And the answer was yes, very nicely. So I enjoyed some toasted with butter very much. So if you're one of these poor souls that only gets to eat meat and vegetables, and are not supposed to eat hardly any carbs, and you lay awake at night dreaming of a buttered piece of bread to eat with it, well, this is not exactly that. At least it gets you close to that experience. And speaking of experience, I decided to finish up by trying another piece of buttered toast and topping it with a professionally sliced and fan strawberry to make sort of a quick and easy strawberry shortcake substitute that I think we're gonna call strawberry shortcut. And so far out of all the different ways I've tried this bread, I think this was my favorite. But anyway, that's it, what I'm calling grain-free butter bread, which I thought would be a much catchier name than grain-free egg bread. But anyway, whether you're gonna make this because you don't use grains, or you just want to try a new fun recipe, or both, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. <laughs>